Here's something I can't figure out. Odin wants to prevent Ragnarok. But the Serpent's already been there and seen it. So hasn't he already failed? Fate's a tricky thing, lad. And Odin's just arrogant enough to think he can get the best of it. Fate is another lie told by the gods. Nothing is written that cannot be unwritten. On that, brother, you and the Old Father may just agree. Even if he can't prevent Ragnarok, he still hopes to learn enough details to influence the outcome. Remind me later to tell you about the wolves. Brock, what do you know about the serpent in the lake? I know he's too damn big. Uh, all right. Yeah, check back soon. Let's try this again, without interruptions. You're familiar with the tale of Skull and Haughty, bringers of day and night. Oh yeah! Aye. They were born of the archwolf Hrothgwitnir, a great nemesis of the Aesir gods. Odin captured them as pups and kept them in the kennels of Asgard to hold his foe at bay. But when the sun and moon grew mutinous and stood still, Odin put Skoll and Haughty to use. With his ancient magics, he cast the wolves to the heavens, and they began to chase. And long shall they chase, but not endlessly. For it is foretold that someday Skoll and Haughty will catch and devour their prey. And that day shall be Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. But... And we'll pick this up later.
Never seen a lock like that before. Reminds me of something I've seen Tear sketch. He liked to combine various symbols into runes all his own. This one, I believe, means... Peace, unity, mercy. Other things, too. I see what he did, but how do we get inside? We have other concerns. Here we go again. Read it. Death itself I swallow, to spring forth life tomorrow. Oh, I like that one. I wonder if I wrote it. Are there. It says Earth. Hmm, swallows death, brings forth life. Go. Yeah. I wish I'd known I was a god in Alphon. I wouldn't have felt so bad about killing so many elves. Well, I'm not sure that's the lesson. You've done nothing to regret. The elves forced their affairs upon us. No, I get it now. We had God things to do, and they were in the way, dragging us into their little problems. Again, are we just leaving that there? I mean, just knowing we're gods makes me feel so much stronger. Maybe you feel a little too good right now. With power comes a big choice, lad. You can either serve yourself, or put your godhood in the service of others, like Tyr did. People really loved him, huh? Aye. A god of war, but one who fought for peace. Had a reputation for being heroic and lawful, using his power and knowledge to stop wars rather than start them. So there are good gods. Once in a moon it's been known to happen, yes. This one mentions places I've never heard of. Seems Tyr really liked to travel. Tyr believed the mind, not might, was key to preventing war and chaos. And he also knew visiting other cultures would give him perspective staying in one place could not. While Odin always hoarded knowledge, guarding it jealously, Tyr was open and sharing with his learning and his wisdom. For this, mortals adored Tyr, showing their love by bringing him gifts the world over. So, whatever happened to Tyr? Odin came to regard him as a threat to his rule. He suspected Tyr of collaborating to aid the giants instead of helping to steal their secrets for the Aesir. The same thing he accused me of, frankly. Though in Tyr's case, I believe he was right. You think Tyr was helping the giants? I do. He felt responsible for the suffering visited upon them by Odin. I suspect he had something to do with helping them cover their tracks. I'm missing Jonan. Correct. Whatever happened to it, I believe it could only have been done with Tyr and the Giants working together. Where is this black room? No, I've never been in here. 
The stone! That has to be it! 